I finally finished reassembling my 3D printer, my Ender 3 V2. It's been laying in here disassembled for weeks because I decided to take it apart for some reason and make it different colors. But yesterday I committed myself to actually finishing a project and it's now built. Not calibrated yet, but it's built. I recorded the build and instead of explaining step by step what I was doing, I'm going to just explain what I did and how I customized things. So first of all, I built this on the floor because it's the flattest area of my apartment and I don't have a workbench right now, so don't judge me. Right away, you'll see the first customization I did to this printer. I printed these ridiculous claw feet that have squash balls underneath them. The squash balls are supposed to absorb the vibrations of the printer and they have worked pretty well for me in the past when I used different feet to do that. However, these are kind of tall, so I'm skeptical that these will work very well and that they won't make the printer too unstable. If they do, I'll have to come back to this and figure out something else, but at least they look kind of cool for now. This is how the printer ships. The whole base of it in the, the build plate comes pre-assembled because it's kind of a to put together yourself. So the first instruction actually is to just attach the Z-axis rails. It's really important that the printer axis remain flush with each other so I kind of just loosely attached everything and then you'll see me come back and retighten everything later. After I did that I attached the z-axis stepper motor again just loosely and I'll come back and tighten it so I can get everything as flush as possible. The next part I did off camera it's the whole x-axis assembly. Normally you would have to build the hot end from the instructions and whatnot but since this is a kind of a custom thing i did this in a way that required some trial and error to fit together properly but i got i got it to work if you're curious the hot end assembly is the hero me gen 7 by someone called media man 3d i had previously used the gen 5 i believe it was and that one worked pretty well but this one has an additional fan that I, I wanted to slap in there, so even better. All of the coolant. So the only thing that I am going to do in the video here is just kind of slide it over the Z-axis rails and then make sure the lead screw threads into the hole that's near the extruder axis motor. I didn't have the camera angled high enough to actually see what I'm was doing in the next step here but all I did was attach the top rail to the two z-axis rails. Like I said earlier it's important that all of the axes are perpendicular with each other so I kind of went back and just tightened all the bolts that hold everything together just to make sure everything's nice and tight and aligned how it's supposed to be. That's pretty much it for the whole assembly of the printer itself. So all that was really left to do after that was rewire everything. I took some pictures beforehand so I can remember how everything was wired when I took it apart. So it really wasn't too hard to kind of put everything back together. There's only so many ways things fit in there anyway. I didn't really feel the need to set up the camera again and re-record that. But I turned it on and the printer was happy. So it works. In keeping with my Blackpink theme here, I used my other 3D printer to print the tensioner knobs, the extruder knobs, and the profile covers, uh, the slot covers for the 2020 and 4040 rails, just to add some little accent colors in there. The last thing I did was just kind of level the bed a bit. I'll come back and do that better later, but what I did was just use a little feeler tool that I have, the 0.2 millimeter, to kind of get things roughly level. I'll use the the information from the BL Touch that I have installed later to get that more exact. In the past I've been able to get everything level within like 0 0.04, 0 0.06 millimeters and right now it's like 0.4 so we've got some improvements to do there but that's okay. Stuff to figure out later. Just kind of to wrap things up here. I did face some problems when I was doing this. So the first thing there's only one port on the Ender 3 V2 main board for the part cooling fan. And obviously I have two fans on here for 
all of the cooling. So what I ended up doing was just splicing the two fans together to that one cable that goes to the one port and it seems to work fine. So they're both drawing power from the same port. Nothing broke, so I'm going to assume that's fine. And then the cooling ducts were kind of tricky to attach properly. They needed to be a certain height above the nozzle in the print bed. And that was kind of hard to get them on to the rest of the thing correctly. Thankfully, Media Man 3D included a little tool to help with that process. So it wasn't too hard. It just kind of took a while because I was like holding one part and trying to get everything together at the same time. With the BL Touch, this kind of was a challenge. The BL Touch, I mounted on the left side of the whole hot end. I don't know why I picked the left, that's just where I had it on there before. But with this hot end, the Gen 7, first few wings and mounts that I printed kind of interfered with the, the limiter switch on the x-axis. And the first one actually snapped because I didn't realize it. So when it went to home all of the axis, it kind of went right into it and just broke. So I had to figure out a combination of mounts and wings to attach to the thing to make this work and to not interfere with that switch. And as you can see here, the clearance was pretty tight on this, but it ended up working. And I had to wrap the wire around and do some interesting cable management here, but it works, so who cares? And last, I somehow managed to misplace the spool mount for this printer. I didn't take it apart too long ago, but it got lost in all of my stuff. So I just found one on Thingiverse that kind of sits on the, the 2020 rail snugly and uses some 608 bearings to let the spool spin freely. This is another thing that I'm concerned about the stability of, especially with the claw feet that I have attached to it. I haven't actually printed anything on this printer yet. I just turned it on to make sure it worked. So we will see if the combination of parts actually works or not. And if it doesn't, back to the drawing board. But at least everything is there for the time being. And the next steps are obviously gonna do some test prints. I'm going to print a Benchy with the cool filament that I got. It's like a black and purple combination. It looked really cool on Amazon. And then I'm going to calibrate everything. Eventually, I'm going to attach a Raspberry Pi with Octoprint onto it so I don't have to deal with the SD card. Later project, though, I only have one Raspberry Pi right now that's connected to my other 3D printer. So I need to source all of that and get everything together before I can start with that. But otherwise, this was kind of fun to rebuild. I love the black pink theme that this kind of ended up with. The filament I used was Hatchbox Purple PETG. I personally think this is more of like a hot pink, hence that black pink theme that I've been saying, but Hatchbox calls it purple, so. I will leave links to all the supplemental parts that I printed from various places in the description. Also, I will leave the exact parts that I used to assemble the Hero Me Gen 7 with the Ender 3 V2. It's organized very well in how he distributes it, but still, if anyone wants to kind of do the same thing, the parts will be listed down there as well. Otherwise, what do you think? I think it looks pretty sweet. I love it. Can't wait to see how it prints. Hopefully it doesn't rock itself apart. Hopefully. We shall see. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, comment, slap the bell. I would really like to quit my day job, so let's do the YouTube stuff.